NASA has recently declared that the time has come to focus more on Venus following new discoveries regarding the possibility of life on the planet. If you review NASA's historical records from the 1960s, you will find that the agency once referred to Venus as a planet from hell. In comparison, Mars had gained more attention as a promising target for exploration. Such harsh descriptions of distant planets were not uncommon during the intense space race period, a time when the Soviet Union was also heavily involved in sending expensive missions to Venus, a planet that appeared almost devoid of any potential for supporting life. Despite this, the Soviet space program did not abandon its Venera missions until the dissolution of the Soviet Empire. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson has played a key role in helping us understand why the Soviets were so captivated by Venus. Join us as we explore the declassified images of Venus captured by the Soviet Union. The collapse of the Soviet Union was momentous for numerous reasons. Not only did it alter the global political landscape, but it also concealed many secrets. The Soviet Union was famous for its secrecy, from operating one of the most sophisticated intelligence agencies in the world to keeping quiet about potential extraterrestrial encounters. Consequently, the former superpower kept numerous secrets hidden. Before the United States took the lead in planetary exploration, the Soviet Union was at the forefront of the space race. While the U.S. and USSR space programs had both successes and failures, their primary focus remained Venus, the mysterious and hostile planet. In Russian, Venus is called Venera, which also became the name of the Soviet mission that lasted from 1961 to 1983. This occurred during the same period that the United States was focused on reaching the moon. The Soviets strategically decided to focus their resources on Venus during the space race. It is not entirely surprising that the Soviet Union invested so much in Venus. Were they considering the planet as a potential site for a military base? Or were they possibly exploring the idea of colonization? After investigating the planet for any signs of life, the exact reasons behind their intense focus on Venus remain unclear, as the Soviet Union was deeply engaged in the Cold War, and many of their objectives were kept secret. In fact, much of what we know about their Venus missions comes from declassified or unarchived documents, and even then, pinpointing the true motivations behind their relentless efforts is difficult. The Soviets didn't just land on Venus once, twice, or three times. In total, they launched 28 rockets targeting the planet, with 13 successfully entering Venus's atmosphere. Of these, eight missions managed to land successfully. These ambitious and complex missions positioned the Soviet Union as a leader in space exploration. While the United States was a close competitor, its focus was more on satellite technology and innovative infrastructure, whereas the Soviets were more committed to investigating the potential for life on distant planets. Their obsession with Venus stemmed from their pursuit of scientific knowledge and technological supremacy. Most history books may not highlight this, but the Soviet space program was the first to send a probe into the atmosphere of a planet beyond Earth. It was also the first country to achieve a soft landing on another planet, and the first to send back images and sound recordings from another planet's surface. While these groundbreaking achievements are often overshadowed by later American accomplishments, they were pivotal milestones in space exploration. In 1992, the Soviet Space Agency was officially dissolved following the USSR's collapse and was later reestablished under the new Russian name, Roscosmos. Unfortunately, many historical records were lost or destroyed during this transition, which is why several aspects of the Soviet space program remain shrouded in mystery. Although we may never fully understand why the Soviets launched so many spacecraft into Venus's atmosphere, it is likely their decision was influenced by cost-effectiveness rather than scientific curiosity. While the Soviet Union was undoubtedly interested in exploring Venus, they were also searching for the presence of water, solar radiation, and other environmental conditions. Without these missions, it would have been difficult for scientists to gain insights into Venus's extreme temperatures and thick atmosphere. Today, many cosmologists still argue that Venus is too hostile to support life. With temperatures hot enough to melt lead and an atmosphere dense with carbon dioxide, it's easy to dismiss the possibility of life on Venus. But to overlook the pioneering efforts of the Soviet space program is to disregard an important chapter in history. For the Soviets, Venus was worth exploring, even if only as part of their broader goal to fuel the space race. 
investigating planets like Mars was not entirely out of the question, but it was a much more costly endeavor than launching missions to Venus. The vast distance between Earth and other celestial bodies played a key role in determining where to focus resources. Venus, on average, is only 40 million kilometers away from Earth, whereas Mars is about 250 million kilometers away. This vast difference in distance is a major factor behind the high costs of Mars exploration. Additionally, the United States' global economic dominance made investigating Mars more feasible for them than for the Soviet Union. Some reports suggest that Soviet missions to Venus were unreliable and faced significant technical difficulties. Many of their spacecraft were not built to cover such vast interplanetary distances, and there were several instances where communication was lost with the rockets. Given these obstacles, it makes sense that the Soviet space program would choose to focus on a nearer planet that offered a better chance of success. However, focusing only on the technical setbacks ignores the larger story of the Venera missions. When the Soviets began launching missions to Venus, the United States was still largely focused on reaching the moon. NASA's Venus missions in the 1960s were plagued by failures, which led to the phenomenon known as the Venus Curse. Every time NASA launched a probe toward Venus, it ended in failure. This was when the Soviet Union saw an opportunity to capitalize on America's struggles and gain a significant victory in the space race. The Soviets accelerated their efforts to explore Venus, viewing the planet as a key milestone in the race to space. Despite their limited resources, the Soviets pressed on, launching a series of successful missions to Venus while the United States focused on the moon. The hellish planet label was attached to Venus in popular media, often used by the United States to downplay the Soviet accomplishments. This negative portrayal of Venus did not deter the Soviet space program, however. Their goal was to demonstrate their superiority over the United States. Although the Soviet Union's Venus missions are not as widely acknowledged today, they were highly ambitious and advanced for their time. The Venera missions marked the beginning of the space age. Starting in the 1950s, the Soviets developed the technology needed to send spacecraft to Venus. Over the next 30 years, they built and launched a series of interplanetary probes as part of the Venera program. During this period, the Soviet Union optimized its resources, making significant progress in space exploration. By the mid-1960s, the Soviet Union had advanced far enough to launch Venera 3, the first artificial probe to enter Venus's atmosphere and make contact with the planet's surface. This achievement intensified the space race between the two superpowers. Unlike the United States, which often struggled with its Venus missions, the Soviet program made steady progress despite several technical setbacks. The USSR's ability to design and launch more advanced rockets allowed them to continue making strides, even as NASA faced challenges with its Venus missions. In the 1970s, the Soviets launched two probes, Venera 4 and Venera 5, in what is considered one of the most exciting decades in space exploration. These dual launches enabled the Soviets to gather data from Venus's atmosphere and surface. Venera 4's success led to the development of more sophisticated spacecraft, including Venera 5, which was designed to collect unique data about Venus's conditions. The 1970s marked the peak of the Soviet Union's Venera program. Venera 7, launched in 1970, was the first spacecraft to transmit data from another planet's surface, providing vital information about Venus's temperature and pressure. Later missions, such as Venera 13, captured color panoramic images of Venus's surface, offering unprecedented insights into its geology. Despite some failures, the Venera missions were essential in advancing our understanding of Venus and space exploration as a whole. In the 1980s, the Soviet Union's Venera 13 went beyond previous missions in complexity, capturing detailed images of the planet's surface. By the time the Soviet Union ended operations in the early 1990s, the Venera program had achieved far more than anyone had anticipated. The legacy of the Venera missions continues today as Roscosmos and NASA prepare for the joint Venerity mission scheduled for the late 2020s or early 2030s. This new mission aims to explore Venus's atmosphere, geology, and history in hopes of uncovering signs of past or present habitability. The Venera missions paved the way for future missions to Venus, Mars, and beyond, and their contributions continue to shape the future of space exploration. The upcoming Venera D mission, a collaboration between Roscosmos and NASA, 
marks an exciting new chapter in the ongoing exploration of Venus. Set to launch in the late 2020s or early 2030s, this mission will focus on studying the planet's atmosphere, geological history, and potential signs of habitability. The spacecraft will be equipped with an orbiter, a lander, and possibly an inflatable structure designed to explore Venus in unprecedented detail. The Venera D mission not only aims to enhance our understanding of Venus, but also underscores the lasting legacy of the Soviet-era Venera program, one of the most ambitious and significant space exploration efforts ever undertaken. As we look to the future, the lessons learned from the Venera missions are still relevant to current and future planetary exploration efforts. The technological advancements achieved by the Soviet space program, such as the development of durable materials capable of withstanding extreme temperatures and pressures, have been critical for subsequent missions to Venus, Mars, and other planets in our solar system. These innovations in space design and instrumentation laid the foundation for modern space exploration and continue to inform mission planning, technology development, and operational strategies. The impact of the Venera program goes beyond the scientific and technological realms. During the Cold War, the space race was not just about scientific achievement but also a way to assert ideological superiority. The success of the Venera missions demonstrated the Soviet Union's technological capabilities and marked an important milestone in its rivalry with the United States. The global community closely followed these milestones, recognizing the Venera missions as a vital part of humanity's expanding understanding of the universe. Each success, such as Venera 7's soft landing on Venus in 1970, was not only a scientific achievement but also a powerful political statement. Despite the challenges of operating in Venus's extreme environment, the Soviet space program's persistence and ingenuity allowed them to overcome technical obstacles. Operating in Venus's hostile conditions, including extreme temperatures of up to 450 degrees Celsius, 842 degrees Fahrenheit, intense atmospheric pressure, and a thick corrosive atmosphere made up mostly of sulfuric acid clouds, presented enormous challenges. These factors made it incredibly difficult for spacecraft to survive long enough to collect meaningful data. Despite these obstacles, the perseverance and ingenuity of Soviet scientists and engineers were key to overcoming these challenges allowing for the successful collection of critical data about Venus's surface and atmosphere. The achievements of the Venera missions were instrumental in deepening our understanding of Venus's inhospitable conditions. From its scorching surface temperatures to its toxic atmosphere, these missions provided invaluable insights into the planet's extreme climate, dominated by carbon dioxide, and its geological features, including volcanic plains and mountainous terrain. The panoramic images captured by later missions such as Venera 13 and Venera 14 furthered our understanding of Venus's surface composition, shedding light on its geological history and possible past volcanic activity. One of the most significant contributions of the Venera missions was their ability to capture the first-ever images of Venus's surface, offering a glimpse into a world previously hidden from view. The success of the Venera program proved that it was possible to gather meaningful scientific data from Venus, even in such a hostile environment. These photographs revealed a rugged alien landscape, vastly different from anything on Earth. The success of the Venera missions demonstrated that, despite the harsh conditions, valuable data could be gathered, pushing the boundaries of human knowledge and expanding our understanding of the solar system. However, not all missions were successful. Some Soviet spacecraft failed to reach Venus or encountered technical malfunctions that prevented them from transmitting data back to Earth. The challenges of operating in such extreme conditions, coupled with the technological limitations of the time, meant that some missions did not achieve their objectives. Nevertheless, the determination of the Soviet space program in the face of these setbacks is a testament to the dedication and resilience of the scientists and engineers involved in the Venera project. In addition to their technical achievements, the Venera missions had significant geopolitical and cultural implications. The success of the Soviet Union space program during the Cold War was a source of national pride and a symbol of the USSR's technological and ideological superiority. Each successful mission to Venus represented not just a scientific achievement but also a political victory in the ideological struggle between the Soviet Union and the United States. The space race was a battle for global influence and the Venera missions played a key role in this competition. 
While the Soviet space program is often overshadowed by NASA's accomplishments, the Venera missions remain a pivotal chapter in the history of space exploration. The technological innovations, scientific discoveries, and political implications of the Venera program have had a lasting impact on our understanding of Venus and space exploration in general. These missions demonstrated the potential for interplanetary travel and paved the way for future missions to Venus, Mars, and beyond. Looking ahead, the legacy of the Venera missions continues to inspire new generations of scientists, engineers, and explorers. The lessons learned from these missions, along with the advancements in technology and knowledge gained over decades of exploration, will guide future missions to Venus and other distant worlds. As space agencies around the world continue to push the boundaries of exploration, the spirit of the Venera program, marked by boldness, perseverance, and innovation, remains a guiding force in the ongoing quest to understand our solar system and the universe beyond.